Do you have planets in the first house? Do you want to know what it means? I'm here to talk about the general significance of the first house as well as take us on a tour of all the possible inhabitants, different planets through the first house. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer. I specialize in natal, relationship, and predictive astrology. I post on Instagram quite regularly. Check out the link down below and check out the link to book a reading with me down there as well. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave me a comment, or hit that like button. I really appreciate that. Before you watch this video, I have done another video where I talk about houses in general, what they mean, what they symbolize. You can check that out down below as well. So today we're going to talk about the first house. And first house is arguably the most important house in the natal chart because it holds the ascendant. The ascendant is that point in time that symbolizes the exact moment of your birth. It's the constellation that was rising on the eastern horizon because ascendant descends and descendant axis in your chart is the horizon line. So the exact moment of birth, the earth was spinning and the specific sign was rising. So it's the moment you come into the world, right? Like it's the most embodied house. It describes your physical body, your physical appearance. It also describes what you think about, what matters to you. In a chart, you know, it determines the layout of your chart because if you are born when Scorpio is rising, Sagittarius will be your second house and, you know, whichever, wherever planets were, they will be determined by that ascendant. So first house holds the ascendant. Basically, dependent on which system you use, it will either be the very beginning of your first house or I use whole sign system. It's going to be maybe in the beginning, maybe in the middle, maybe at the end, one of those possibilities. So it's, it's your physical body, it's the way you dawn on people, the way people see you, which qualities they acknowledge in you the most. It's, it's your unconscious way of projecting yourself, right? Like you don't necessarily always, you're not necessarily always aware of the way you project yourself, but people perceive that. It deals with your vitality and your overall health energy. Say you have sun in the first house, you might appear as more energetic, brighter, louder, right? Somehow more noticeable. Of course, it depends on the aspects and we're looking at really bits and pieces. You need to look at the whole chart together. For that, you should get a reading one day. Um, so the way people perceive you, the way you perceive yourself, because the ascendant is ruled by a specific planet that becomes your chart ruler, your identity is heavily impacted by that. Say you are Gemini or Virgo, you're ruled by Mercury, you become, your personality becomes very inquisitive, very rational. If you're ruled by Venus, you are relationship oriented. If you're ruled by the moon and you are Cancer rising, you're driven by your emotions. So planets in the first house tend to speak a lot louder because it's literally the house of self, right? You embody those planets. A lot of times, whichever planet you have in the first house, you may even look like. Let's go through the planets and talk about what they mean. So if you have your sun in the first house, you will embody the child of the sun. And so sun is bright, sun shines. We all go towards it. We are not supposed to look at it, but we crave it, we seek it, right? Like we, we like laying in the sun, most of us. So people with the sun in the first, they resemble that energy. They have that energy of a leader. And children of the sun are people who are um, speakers, who are actors, teachers, performers, even like a yoga teacher is someone who people, they follow the moves that yoga teacher, yoga teacher is presenting. So you have that energy. Even if you are shy, you know, your personality just exudes when you walk into the room. Like people see you, people may automatically give you more leadership roles. Um, they will see, they will basically understand who you are and you're not likely someone unless you have like Sun Scorpio conjunction, but it's likely that you will be honestly yourself without trying to hide or, you know, manipulate other people or pretend to be someone you're not. 
it gives a lot of energy usually and unless other factors contradict it you may be someone who likes the spotlight and like a lot of attention give you some examples of people with sun in the first brad pitt and grace kelly i think you see it in both of them like brad pitt is just such a personality um, and Grace Kelly is so bright and so magnificent in a lot of ways. If you have your moon in the first house, moon is quite different, right? Like moon will make you very sensitive physically, like you can be easily bruised, um, you know, easily hurt both physically and like emotionally. You will be more intuitive and it's also likely because moon deals with um, with maternal roles so you may also be someone who like embodies a mother right like take on a motherly role moon is emotions you may be someone who's moodier someone who's more sensitive to the way people treat you or the words people say um, as a result i think a lot of times people with the moon in the first house develop strong defense mechanisms and boundaries where they don't necessarily let everyone in right away similarly to a cancer rising right like they have a shell that they may spend some time in you may have a rounder face like kind of like lunar face um and i think it's harder for people with a cancer rising i think it's harder to hide emotions because they just kind of show up on your face if you're happy people see that you're happy if you're sad people see that you're sad and you may be someone who's like very creative too um the moon absorbs a lot of stuff right like it may absorb emotion and it may express emotions through writing or cooking or anything like that and home and family tend to mean a lot like you may be someone who um remembers family and remembers early conditioning early experiences and your mom because the moon represents the mother your mom can also be quite present in your life like i know someone who's a scorpio rising with a scorpio moon and she has lived with her mom up until she was like 32 i think so speaking of the mom literally being there um kate winslet has her moon in the first house as well as madonna if you have mercury in the first house like me um you may be someone who is very curious and kind of restless right like mercury is the, the fast planet it's the talkative planet communication becomes part of your identity you need to express yourself you need to talk and it's also likely that you talk faster <laughs> slow down anastasia um i like the way i talk so i see mercury in the first house i can have conversations with myself i don't even need um <laughs> no i do but I do have conversations with myself. So there is that desire to communicate. You may enjoy meeting different people. You're likely to enjoy travel. You're likely to enjoy learning. You may be have maybe known as an idea person, you know, and you're also likely someone who adapts very easily to different people and you can have the conversation with people of different walks of life. Um, writing speaking is part of your identity and you may also be quite skilled with different languages or good at learning languages zoe deschanel has this placement and hillary clinton two very different people but zoe deschanel i definitely see like you know fastness and like quick mind for sure if you have venus in the first house you are the child of venus so they tend to be very magnetic and very beautiful a lot of times very charming because you exude that venusian harmonious pleasant energy and you may be someone who's also a peacemaker in your environment and you try to create peace you really care about the way you look likely you know like you you may spend and it's very similar to people who are venus ruled like taurus or libra risings um aesthetics you know things being pleasant in your environment colors matching you may be spending more money on clothes or beauty products and likely you have some kind of creative talent there's so many actresses with venus in the first house angelina jolie charlize theron beyonce cameron diaz very beautiful very like you know lovely people to look at mars in the first house is a very active personality there might be a perception of the world as like series of missions to accomplish series of adventures to go on 
you may be restless and it's also likely that you may encounter conflict in life more often and you may perceive yourself a little bit as like you know me against the others um a not so wonderful example of mars in the first house is donald trump but you know you don't have to be donald trump like you know he's just one but he definitely embodies that friction right like even all of his Instagram, like he was a Gemini, like Twitter, not Instagram, Twitter battles with people and outbursts. Um, and the way he presents yourself, I think, is very, very martial. So confidence a lot of times radiates from people, assertiveness. You can stand up for the rights of people, for other people. You can be quite active physically, um, you know, maybe be like a soldier or a military person or a policeman. I think definitely, you know, like you, you need to find an outlet for expression of that martial energy. And if you do, you can be quite courageous and also very passionate about things that you believe in. People who have Jupiter in their first house are usually quite jolly because Jupiter is optimistic and positive. Um, very generous people, I would say, happy to share their knowledge, happy to share their wisdom insights maybe more than just wisdom and insights with other people they often embody a role of a teacher and they can be luckier somehow like you know maybe if you if you have jupiter in the first house share down below that if you feel it or not um there is a sense of optimism and expansion and kind of maybe like search for more in life desire to learn desire to I just keep thinking of teaching, right? Like desire to give your wisdom to other people. If you're not careful, there might be a tendency to gain weight because Jupiter is big and jolly and expansive. So you may need to work on like, you know, mastering a little bit of Saturnian energy. Usually people have strong morals and strong beliefs and like they will not go against their values and their beliefs. And you may be someone who always sees a silver lining or really deep down in your heart believe in the power of positive thinking bill clinton is an example of jupiter in the first house um you know another politician and like a different example for people with saturn in the first house you may you're likely someone who had to grow up earlier um there might be you are likely more shy and more restrained and more quiet early in life and it's possibly because you've had to overcome difficulties or you had to take on certain responsibilities there may, may be a realistic point of view to you um and seriousness right and like one of your strengths is is patience and you're not shying away from hard work Britney Spears is an example of Saturn in the first house and like look at her success and look at how much it took her to get to that point like we met her when she was really young but she didn't become celebrity overnight she became, she like worked as a child um don't do it though because it didn't really work super great for her in the long run um unless you want to be famous and you know you have good people around you then totally do it but yeah, your strengths are this responsibility, realism, ability to take care of people, persistence, self-discipline, um, endurance, right? And the older you get, the more in touch with Saturn you become and less Saturn becomes an enemy and more Saturn becomes your friend. Ultimately, you even have the power to be recognized for that hard work. But it's likely that recognition will come after efforts and labors. Uranus in the first house, people tend to be very quirky, very different, you know, something they do, whatever they do, even if it's not conscious. Um, my teacher mentioned having a classmate that was goth before being goth was popular, and then everyone in their university suddenly started dressing in dark colors, and this guy was like, um, not interesting anymore, and he started wearing like a blue collar, you know, clean cut, clean shaven kind of look. Um, so yeah, it may, it may be something that comes naturally to you. You may be someone who's rebellious or likes to see themselves as an outcast. There's a sense of individuality and needing freedom. Wherever you do, whatever you are, you need space. You need some time to go off and do things on your own. You, all, you may have unique ideas and you may be also someone who goes through 
sudden changes in life. Like maybe once in a while you go through an upheaval and you quit your job and you move away and you start in a brand new place. There is like a chance of sudden and unexpected new beginnings. And an example of Uranus in the first house is Kurt Cobain. And there's definitely, you know, very interesting, unique personality. No one is like him, was like him. People with Neptune in the first house tend to be very sensitive and very intuitive, but sometimes they may lose themselves. Question of who am I, I think, could be asked oftentimes by people with Neptune in the first house. They're just so sensitive to the impressions that they receive from other people. And it's important to step back sometimes and separate what is truly yourself and what might be things that you're picking up and energy you're picking up from other people. You may also be someone who blends well with easy, well with other people. If you feel like others don't understand you, it might be because you know what they want or they need what they need at the moment and you adapt to it. This is great for creative work, for writing. Maya Angelou has this placement. Um, and you know, you may be someone who's like naturally drawn to water and naturally drawn to spend time by the sea and you may be drawn to luxury as well um, or some kind of mystique. Um, I think Hollywood being like a Hollywood actress might be appealing to you um, or being a psychic. <laughs> being interested, I think, in like looking for ways of self-definition could be a part of your life. Janet Jackson, Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton have this placement and like Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton definitely maximize I think the allure that Neptune in the first house brings because there might be also like pull towards you kind of magnetic energy um, and also the ways they became famous right kind of like Neptune has a bit of that clouded energy or like slipping through the cracks and like you know Kim Kardashian and the sex tape and I think Paris also had the sex tape did she let me know down there if you can because I'm not a big fan Pluto in the first house people Britney Spears is here once again have really interesting personalities they may be quite reserved and private and also very magnetic and powerful. There is something about them, maybe they don't even speak, but they walk into the room and you see them. They make a very strong first impression. But that secretiveness that comes with Pluto, that uh, Pluto overshadows, Pluto darkens. So sometimes even they may not, may not fully understand themselves or they may be very protective of what other people think of them. The topics of you know how much to show, how much to keep private are very important for them. And it's also, there are also people who go through transformations and challenges. And another example of like, you know, Uranus, but here with Pluto, they may also once in a while go through a complete rebirth of identity. Britney Spears, for sure, you know, like being a star, losing everything, dealing with mental health issues, gaining her freedom back. Um, lots of transformations and she's doing it in public because she's a famous person. So you may be someone who have gone through difficulty really early on and you've learned to be self-sufficient and that of course that tendency to keep things hidden and private comes from something right like it comes from the early conditioning and early troubles um, but it gives you that power and strength in pursuing goals Watch out for being vindictive, though. I think, you know, speaking of Britney Spears, we're seeing it right now, even with her and her sister and like the way how much drama there is in a place where maybe there shouldn't be that much drama. Finally, wanted to touch on if you have Chiron in the first house, Chiron deals with the wounds, right? Like we all have it somewhere in our chart. So Chiron in the first is likely a person who may have been minimized when they were younger. They may have been told by other people that they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't do that. Um, they should be quiet, they should be removed, they should clean their room. I mean, it's okay to clean your room. <laughs> I'm a Virgo after all, you know, cleaning the room is wonderful. Um, not that I enjoy it, I'd love to hire someone who will do it for me. But there may have been a sense of somehow being boxed in. And so people with Chiron in the first house, I think, is trying to figure out who they are in life 
and on a physical level because first house is the embodiment and it's your body there might be a dislike or discontent of your own appearance and a sense of dissatisfaction maybe you zoom in on one freckle you have on your face and you feel unhappy about it while other people may see this as your special feature and they, they may actually admire you for it I dated someone with Chiron in the first house and there was definitely a little bit of that um, and because Chiron is the wounded healer, you always have the power to use your wounds and your pain to help other people. So Chiron and the first people are great at making others believe in themselves and encouraging them to grow and expand and overcome their difficulties. And through doing that, they learn to believe in themselves. I hope this resonated. I look forward to seeing your comments and see if you can add anything to my descriptions or if you you know, if you have something to say about them. Have a great day. Bye.